Welcome to another episode of Open Up the Workforce. I'm your host, Ava Sadecki, co-founder and CEO at Simba. Today, we have a great episode in store for you. We invite the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Nina Fleming, who leads the development and execution of Salvas' strategy for a more diverse and equitable workplace. Her business philosophy is rooted in the belief that inclusion is not a nice to have, but rather a business imperative that leads directly to a healthy culture, strong performance, and an improved bottom line. Nina, we're so excited to have you with us today. Nina, would you tell our listeners more about yourself and your career story? Absolutely. First of all, thank you so much. I think my story really starts, I grew up seeing my parents be really active in the community. I remember my dad sponsoring voter registration drives to get people eligible to vote. And my parents consistently taught me to whom much is given, much is required. And if I was fortunate enough to be in a room, I needed to represent for the people who weren't in the room yet. And so I think it's really funny to say that I was taught the values of diversity and inclusion and equity even before I knew that terminology. And so my professional background centered on sales, advertising, and marketing, but there was never a time where I wasn't advocating for more people who looked like me or who looked different than the majority to be in the room or get promotions and wanting companies to spend money with vendors of all types. So working in DEI full time is a dream come true for me because it's my passion, my purpose, and my role all aligned. What a powerful motto too around creating access and really lifting those up who are not in the room too. And I appreciate you for sharing that with us even before this whole notion around this, this as you was claiming around DEI. So really appreciate that, Nina. I would love to understand a little bit how Savos fosters inclusion and belonging for early talent. So one of our core values is being inclusive and it's our newest core value, but we are very serious about creating the environment where our employees really believe that they can show up as their authentic selves and it's fine. Psychological safety, emotional intelligence, all of those aspects are foundational to being inclusive. And so as solos, we're doing that training so that our entire organization can understand that and they can feel the difference. We're working really hard to take away the stigma from words like bias and privilege. We all have both. And we really need to understand how we can mitigate how they show up. If we've got bias, it doesn't disappear. It's still there, but we need to learn how to recognize when it shows up and how to overcome decisions that might have been previously made with bias in mind. And so we're expanding our trainings on holistic hiring and culture ads as opposed to culture fits. And in addition, we are observing occasions both regionally and globally on our cultural calendar to help in awareness and exposure for other cultures and cultural appreciation. And so we also have a newsletter that we do once a quarter where we discuss what we're working on and we highlight some of our past accomplishments so that our entire organization is in the loop as to what we're doing. And we have a private email address strictly for diversity and inclusion questions or concerns. And our goal is truly that our team feel the difference in our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you for sharing. And I appreciate that you have a cultural calendar. At Simba, we have so many cultures represented. I'd love to know how do people add to that cultural calendar? And maybe you could give us some examples of how you celebrate different cultures. Absolutely. We just did a big celebration on Neurodiversity Celebration Week. That was two weeks ago. And it was the first time in Selvos that we actually celebrated and then we had a group of employees volunteer their time. And so each day we discuss one aspect of neurodiversity and we would talk about what the definition was, what the superpowers are of someone who may have that characteristic. And then we also spoke about celebrities that they may be aware of who actually identifies having that particular characteristic. And so it provided a lot more knowledge to our team. And we completed that week by sending out a message to all of our managers and above on how to best 
support employees who may be neurodiverse. And we also celebrated International Women's Day and we've celebrated International Men's Day. And we have panels, global panels of volunteers who will speak about their career journey and provide advice to our team at Selvos. And we also add to the cultural calendar. It's impossible to know every occasion that might be important to our staff. So if there is an occasion that we didn't necessarily have on the calendar just because we didn't know about it or we overlooked it, it's as simple as someone sending us an email to say, hey, this is this date and this is important and we will add it to the calendar. We're very flexible and we want it to be a continuously evolving document. That's so important, those channels of communication that you have. And I appreciate all those examples that you shared with us. Those are powerful ways of understanding these as superpowers and equating them to celebrities and making this such a positive outlook and conversation. I truly appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of research and work around why we stay at jobs and why we are excited to grow within a company. And, and that is growth trajectory. So I'd love to understand at Salvos how you under make sure that diverse talent and early careers has an opportunity and equal a chance for growth and development within the company. I partner very closely with our HR team and we have really been doing, I feel like a very progressive job of understanding the talent that we have and the potential for growth and development. And we have both internal and external development opportunities. And we want to make sure that our early career talent they're ready for the next opportunity, right? I mean, you come in the door at a company and you want to grow. How do you do that? And what are the realistic expectations of doing that? One of the aspects that we're very proud of at Sovos is that we promote a lot from within. And so people here get that opportunity if you're interested. And we have a learning platform that is available to our associates 24 hours a day. So they can take courses that maybe something that you don't even work in, but you're interested in learning in, and it may not relate to your current position at all. So you can continue to develop that way. We also have what we call cloud rotations, where if you're interested in another area and you don't currently work in that, you can do a short-term project with that department or that area so you can learn about it before you fully transfer and you are committed to it. So for instance, if I'm an engineer, but I'm interested in marketing, I can take a short-term project and work with the marketing group and understand more of what they do and how they do it. And then if I'm interested and there's a position open, I can apply and I already understand some of the nuances to marketing. I really appreciate that. And that's why with Simbo, we get so excited about early careers because we feel like that's actually how you learn. I'm one of, one of the students who, I'd say I'm a lifelong learner, but some of the degrees that I got in my undergrad, I'm not using them directly the way that I am in my role today, but I've been learning so many things through experiential learning. And I think that's so powerful that you have a culture and an environment that empowers that. Um, do you feel like it's easy to get your employees to buy into that? Or do you have to advocate for a culture of learning and taking some of those opportunities out? Because sometimes people don't always tap into them. I think it's a mix. I mean, we do have people here who are lifelong learners and they're ready for every development opportunity. And there are others where they're committed to doing their job and they don't necessarily always prioritize additional development and learning because they are fully committed on a daily basis to doing what they need to do for their job and they may have other obligations outside work. So we have a mixture. And what we've tried to do is enable people who are interested in the developmental opportunities. We have cohorts and we do our best to make sure that those are diversified. And so that we have a balance of talent that's ready for that next level. Thank you. And I think one thing that you said that piqued my interest too was external development, because oftentimes we have to make such a strong business case for internal development because it grows our business. Can you speak a little bit more to that? Sure. We've partnered with some outside organizations because our learning and development 
staff at Sovos is relatively small. And we run some programs in-house and those are very strong programs, but they take a fair amount of labor to continue those programs. And so we know that we cannot serve everyone at their different stages. So we have partnered with some external organizations, one of which for early career women. And it is a step before you would actually take the internal solos training, where it's just teaching you about professionalism and asking and advocating for yourself. And we, we're we excited that people are able to take those opportunities to learn more and what, what our team understands is that anytime you're presented with the developmental opportunities, that's so most making an investment into you. And that means we see a future for you with our organization. And people appreciate that it, it increases engagement and increases inclusivity. And it's also, it's also developing people with skills and with competencies that you have for the rest of your life. I mean, that's the beauty of education and development. This is a personal investment into yourself. And sometimes it does mean that you have to sacrifice additional time to do it, but it's a rewarding, it's a rewarding process. You as a lifelong learner, and I am also, I've always appreciated when I'm get when I'm given the uh, the opportunity to learn something new. And I think that our our team enjoys being able to be viewed as part of our future as the company. We want to invest in you. That's so powerful, Nina. I think that's why our team was so excited to have you on board to speak with you because in this time where often there are budget cuts and teams are evaluating where they put their spend and where they put their dollars, we're seeing that you have stayed very consistent with your investment and the work that you're doing to develop your team and create these opportunities both internally and externally. I'd love to know what advice do you have for other companies who are considering these initiatives and and learning, what what would you share with them? It's a priority and investing into your team and and their development will always pay off for companies because you gain their engagement, you gain discretionary effort when people believe that you appreciate them. And that's another way to show that you appreciate your teams. A lot of times we, wrongly assume that compensation is the only way that teams feel rewarded. And that's not true. Learning and development is one aspect where your reward will always pay off because the more people know, the better they can add to innovation and they can add to the future of your company. New ideas come from development. And just simply the way that you show up for work when you know that your company believes in you. And for DEI, there is a whole different arrangement of of considerations to make when companies are ready to invest in that. And it's always worth it. Another thing worth having is is free so much in, in business, there's an investment, right? And the return on your investment is phenomenal when you invest in your people and in your team. Yes, I studied economics and I remember one of the first lessons which professor taught us was that nothing is free. It's always an investment, always an exchange, whether it's time or value. And we do a lot of research in understanding how we measure ROI. Are there specific metrics that your team is tracking, especially as you communicate the impact of this work with leadership? We are measuring in, in diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have metrics and we've done an assessment of our organization. And I believe for companies who are interested in DEI or beginning their DEI journey, it's really valuable to get a third party outside consultant to do the assessment because they can be a lot more objective about what is really being done as opposed to what the intention is of what's being done. And I suggest that companies look at every level, every department, where what talent do you have and what talent don't you have? It's very important 
you need diversity on every level. And a lot of times people just think of that as race and gender, but you need age diversity, you need experience diversity, and you need to make sure that you have diversified people on every level. Where do you recruit? You know, who's leaving your organization? Does it reflect the same percentages that you're hiring or is one group more likely to leave than another? That's going to give you information on inclusion. How inclusive is your culture? And how are developmental opportunities provided? Is that equitable? What are your employees saying on your engagement surveys? How included do they feel? And can you actually search this information by demographic? What about your performance review process? Have you reviewed that to make sure that it's equitable? Does your marketing reflect diversity? And have the people who interacted with your customers been trained about bias and inclusion? What celebrations does your company observe, observe? Do these adequately reflect the, the celebrations that your employees are actually observing? And does your mission and your core values reflect appreciation for diversity, inclusion, and equity? The overall goal is to understand where you are and wherever you are, it's not something to be embarrassed about because everybody starts someplace because the goal is to improve. And while these questions sound simple, it takes time, it takes intentionality, it takes strategy and accountability. And none of it is easy, but all of it is so worth it. And building a organization where talent wants to be there and it's a desired place to work. Employees gain inclusion and companies gain innovation. And I think you gave our listeners the full checklist and, and guidebook <laughs> on, into all the questions they need to be asking. I know I'm nodding and taking notes here and definitely excited to go back and listen to this because it's so, so helpful. The questions that you're asking around who's leaving, how are we making sure that we're supporting diversity in all ranges and elements? The idea of an outside consultant is, is really helpful, especially making sure you have a diverse consultant who's coming in and guiding the work that you're doing. So I appreciate these insights that you've shared with us. And at Simba, as we are a tech for good company, we began as a social impact startup with late Congressman John Lewis in Atlanta. And our whole vision around Simba and mission is to open up the workforce. And to us at Simba, that means creating a future of work that supports equitable access to jobs and wealth creation. We'd love to get your perspective, Nina. What do you think are the next steps talent leaders need to take in order to open up the workforce? I believe the first step is to evaluate our recruiting and hiring process for bias. Where are we recruiting and how are we recruiting? And if we've only got one or two funnels, we absolutely could be better. We can open that talent pipeline and the more that the talent pipeline is open, the more that we will attract diverse young talent, diverse mature talent, diverse talent to our organization. And that is truly the key. What are our processes? Are, are our processes equitable? And when I say that, if, if we have screening tools, assessing who's getting through those screening tools and who's not, we need to evaluate every single aspect of that. And to to be able to open up the workforce is a win for a company. It's a win for employees and it is truly a win for the companies. And sometimes I believe that we do what we do because we've always done it. But having companies like Semba who can give perspectives on diverse talent that may be new to the workforce is very valuable and partnering with companies who will do that and who will help you think of engaging talent in new ways. We appreciate that perspective, especially when you say it's a win for both the employers and the employees. That's where our whole name Simba came from, symbiotic relationships where everyone is gaining value. We appreciate you for being with us. We appreciate the work and the impact that you're leading. Um, and we'd love to open up the floor if there's anything else you'd like to share with our listeners before we wrap up today. Thank you so much, everyone. Please look at your organizations and let's start looking and searching for culture ads to our organizations. 
we all have opportunities and let's maximize those. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nina. Thank you, Alva. Thank you.